Hello everyone. In the present video, I will try to cover bus structure. The simplest and most common way of interconnecting various parts of the computer is using bus structure. To achieve a reasonable speed of operation, a computer must be organized so that all its units can be handled one full world of data at a given time. That means in order to achieve the reasonable speed of operation, a computer must handle a uh, uh, must handle one full world of data at a given time. So a group of lines that serve as a connecting part for several devices are called as a bus. Bus is nothing but group of wires and the information can be exchanged through the bus in the, uh, in the form of electrical signals. So uh, a group of lines that serve a, uh, as a connecting port for several devices. So that is nothing but a bus. In addition to the lines that carry the data, the bus must have lines for address and control purpose. That means we are having different uh, types of buses like data bus, address bus and control bus. So in addition to, uh, uh, to the lines that carry the data, uh, the bus must have lines for address as well as control purpose. So this is a simplest diagram which shows all the device, uh, all the uh, blocks like input uh, unit, memory unit, processor, output, everything is connected through the single bus. A single bus structure is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, offers low cost, very flexible for attaching peripheral devices. So I can say that if you're using single bus, uh, the problem here is we have to connect all the uh, all the blocks like input, output, memory, or processor to the single bus. But cost-wise, which is very uh, less and uh, the single bus is very flexible for attaching peripheral devices we can uh, uh, we can add uh, any number of devices with uh, devices which is very flexible so next is multiple bus structure certainly increases so number of buses are more uh, the performance uh, it, it will in improve the performance but also increases the cost significantly so obviously the cost will be more if you are using a more number of buses so this is just structure of three bus, uh, uh, three types of buses and their uh, utility. So we can observe that address bus is connected between processor that is CPU and the I.O. port as well as uh, 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 connected between the CPU and I.O. port. The data bus is connected between CPU, I.O. port as well as CPU and the memory and uh, that uh, control bus is exclusively used in order to exchange the control informations like read as well as write so if you are uh, if the processor need to perform read or write operation uh, either uh, into the memory or from the memory so obviously it need to generate some kind of control signals the control signal uh, during read operation is read control signal and uh, the uh, the control signal during write operation is write control signal so we can observe that the control uh, control bus is used between processor and the memory processor and the memory and which is unidirectional similarly address bus is used between processor and io devices again which is uh, uh, which, which is unidirectional but the data bus is bidirectional uh, bi bidirectional uh, because uh, the uh, the processor may read or write the information into the IO ports or, or else the IO port can uh, exchange the data uh, data uh, through the processor from the memory so next we'll see address bus it is a group of lines or wires used to refer a physical location in memory the number of lines in address bus determines the number of physical memory locations which is, uh, it is unidirectional the address bus is exclusively used uh, you know uh, you used by the processor uh, by the processor in order to in order to fetch the information uh, from the memory by using addressable locations the number of lines in the address bus determines the number of physical memory locations in the memory so next is data bus so also called as memory bus used to carry the data 
as the name specifies data bus uh, is used to carry the data which is bidirectional on the both the directions uh, both the directions data can be exchanged between the devices using the data bus the physical connection that carry the control information between the cpu that is processor and other devices within the computer so that is called as control bus the control bus is used uh, in order to carry the control information between processor and the other devices the other devices may be io devices or the memory so uh, the uh, entirely control bus will be co uh, used by the processor itself so now we'll think uh, what are the difference between address bus data bus and control bus so as we know that control bus is exclusively used uh, in order to carry the control information what are the difference between address bus and data bus is so we'll see one by one address bus a computer bus or address bus that is used to specify a physical address in the memory and the data bus is used to transmit the data among the components means the data bus is exclusively used in order to carry or exchange the data between the uh, be between the devices or components but the address bus is used uh, you uh, used to specify a physical address in the memory so address bus will specify uh, the physical address of the memory so but address bus is unidirectional but data bus is bidirectional one so next is address bus which helps to transfer memory addresses of data and io but data bus helps to uh, send and receive the data because it is bidirectional uh, the data bus is used to send as well as receive the informations or data so next is address bus uh, which determines the amount of memory a system can address so uh, under a data bus width determines the data transferring rate so uh, we can improve the data transferring rate if you are improve or if you are increasing the width of the data bus so this uh, this particular table exactly specifies what are the difference between address bus and data bus